Good evening. My name is Lavette Haynes. I'm Executive Director of Westside Culture Arts Council, located at the Garfield Park Gold Dome in East Garfield Park, Chicago, Illinois. And we're here for the show Woman to Woman, produced by Wanda Carter. And our guest tonight is Shirley Hudson, a very profound artist uh, who I've known for about 20 years and have admired uh, her style, her creativity, her independence in the arts. Um, Shirley, can you tell us about yourself? Well, well, my name is Shirley Hudson and I'm a Chicago artist and I've been um, creating art for the last 20 years. And um, it's, it's my, my passion, passion first love. love. And uh, how long have you been in, in the past? All my life, but officially 20 years. And um, what, what made you become an artist? Um, there was me. There was me. I was uh, suffering from what I call RDO. RDO is repressed, depressed, and overrushing. So, so, so the art actually helped me to um, cope in terms, terms of my um, repressed feelings, oppression, depression, and uh, the more I painted it, the better I felt. And so, so that, that would, would be almost like, like an art therapy. Yes. Yeah, so so I am my own doctor. Yes. <laughs> And um, what, what influenced you, what influences you to create? Is there anything that you do in particular that helps you to know what kind of art you want to do? Not really. You know, that picture, um, a true artist paints from the soul, you know, the, the, the spirit. Everything else is, 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 is uh, a cumulative, you know. It's something that, that you are. Mm -hmm. Each time that you do a series of uh, paintings, it, it, it should be, a, a, it's a cumulative, a cumulative of your skills okay. and techniques. And then your experiences. The more you do, the better you get. And then this is, you say that this is your passion. So, so is, 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 do you think art is every day? Every minute. Every minute? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's in um, how, how you dress, dress how, how you talk, talk how you move, how, how you uh, wear your hair, how, how you view objects. Mm -hmm. Everything is art. art. Mm -hmm. And my mother is, 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 is always, always saying, Shirley, everybody, everybody doesn't love art when, art when you, you do. do. And, and, that's okay. and tonight we're also going to uh, talk a little bit about Shirley's art as we're going to see. Uh, this is the wonderful creation and what I would like to know is all of the art that we have here on stage, which is your favorite piece? Oh, yes. Uh, this one seems to be so busy. And, and seem to have a lot of the death. death. So, is this maybe the one? This is what's called um, evolution, you know. And then what is this? It's, it's about, about change. It's, it's about, about um, becoming the person you were meant to be, you know. And, and when we need to do that, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot of work, it's a surgery. So, so about the Journey, you know, and this is where the reason why I, I love it so much is because I, I made this in a time where I had so much noise in my head. Therefore, this gave me um, an album release. And I like to see your, seems like there are many eyes in it, so that. So like a vision of yourself and well, what you see? Well, in my work, I 
paint a lot on our eyes because the eyes are truly the window to the soul. And um, what would you say is the most difficult thing about being an artist? Difficult. Mm -hmm. Start. Um, <laughs> well, as an artist, I can, I can really relate to that. And, and I, I think, think that's, that's why my passion is to assist our artists. Because, because as an artist, and, and having a family, yeah. and, and knowing the struggles, Whenever, Whenever I meet an artist, this is almost like my, my servitude. It's like, what can I do to help you get, you get to, to your next level? level. And so, so this show is to, to tell the world and to let the world see that the artist needs to be supported. And if this message gets to you around the world, our purpose here is to showcase Shirley's talent, to let you see to let, let you choose, and, and to maybe put, put some, some of her artwork on your wall. wall. And, and, uh, and that's, that's the sustainability of the artist, because the artist has, has to be an artist and has, has to be supported by, by the art. art. So <clears throat> uh, what, what would you say that your, your, next, your, your next step, step in, in, in this journey, journey of, of the art, art is, is, is are you going? going? What, what would you say your next, next step is? My next step is to be more organized in terms of labeling my artwork, pricing it. It's just because a lot of artists are not business savvy. Many people start a business believing all they need to do is open the doors and the money will start flowing in. It's much more difficult than that, but these nine steps can help a new business succeed. First, get organized. Complete tasks and stay on top of what needs to be done. Create a to-do list and check off items as you complete them. Next, keep detailed records so you always know where the business stands financially and what challenges await. Analyze your competition. They may be doing something you can implement yourself to make more money. Understand the risks and rewards. Taking the right risks is the key to being successful, but first ask, what's the downside? If you know the answer, you know the worst case scenario and that can guide your difficult decisions. Be creative. Be open to new ideas and make your business stand out. Stay focused. Rome wasn't built in a day and neither is a lucrative business. It takes time to get the word out, so focus on short-term goals. Prepare to make sacrifices. Getting a business's doors open takes a lot of work, but that's just the start. In many instances, succeeding requires spending less time with family and friends. Afrocentric figurative arts. Because your some of your work um, has has anyone ever said that your work reminds them of Picasso? Oh, of course, of course, okay. of course. Okay. And um, I see that you have uh, a variety of your work. And what would you say is your favorite piece on the stage? Well, my favorite piece is Evolution. This one right here. It's it's uh, painting on wood. I love wood. Oh, I would have never thought that it framed like it is. Yes. Okay. How long? How old? How, when did you do that piece? Nineteen ninety six. Wow, that's a long time. So and my earlier pieces. Is it for sale? Yes, it is. Of course. Have you held on to it as though you don't want to sell it? <laughs> oh, it's for sale. It's for sale. It's for sale. <laughs> okay. And um, just give us um, 
a little background on on your style. What what influences you to create? Because I see a lot of your work is of of uh, women. Women. Mm -hmm. Well, well, like I said earlier, you know, I, I felt um, repressed, oppressed, and depressed, you know. But it is is that we as women are not allowed to be ourselves, you know. Whereas men are born saying no. Women have to learn how to say no. Why is that? And so you have that as an interpretation through your art. Oh, absolutely. And I see that that makes that statement very powerful. And instead of saying it, it shows through your art. And uh, so my next question to you is where, where do you see yourself going um, like to the next level that you go to? Where do you see yourself going? Probably um, selling my art through the uh, internet, you know, mm -hmm. websites, mm -hmm. art shows. Mm -hmm. do, is that like part of the fun of it when you're in that mood? Uh, do you look forward to presenting? Presenting? Do presenting your art, you know, showcasing it to the public, selling it. That's part of of, of sharing it. You know, we're 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 here to share, mm -hmm. to experience each other's lives. You know, we're we're not living on this planet alone. Mm -hmm. Everybody affects everybody. It's like a domino effect. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about the art movement right now? What, what do you, you know, how do you see it being encompassed as, um, as a movement? As a movement? Okay. You know, just continuing um, showcasing and knowing artists and creating this, uh, this, this art movement that creates history reaching out to the world and showcasing and, and how do you how do we keep that like in the forefront of our history to make history with art basically um, art has always been here you know it's just that certain human beings value money over art. You know, mm -hmm. if 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 we didn't have art in the world, this will do it really be a uh, barbaric society. It really would. I never looked at it. No like joy. That. I never looked at it. Like that. No joy. Because the artists, they do uh, make you smile. It, yeah. it brings emotion. It either makes you smile, makes you wonder, makes you uh, think about the, the the person behind the the, the, the paintbrush, right. and so that's why this form is important because our viewers need to know who creates the history in our community, and you're one of the history makers. And I've known you for about 20 years, and you've been very consistent with your your showcase. I mean, it's 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 ongoing, and now I see you more on the internet or on Facebook, and you know people are getting to know you. So I do think that that avenue to be known is such a wonderful uh, uh, such a wonderful path to show yourself to the world and your capabilities. Oh, absolutely, you know, because you have to be able to adjust to your environment, you know. If you don't, just like the, uh, the dinosaurs, you know, you would cease to exist. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you have to move forward you know, mm -hmm. towards the uh, internet, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you 
see young people uh, as as because I, I was uh, at your studio and we were able to mingle with some younger artists. How is your relationship with the younger artists? Where do you see them going, and where are they in in their creation of uh, of being being artists? Okay, younger artists are close to being childlike, you know, mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. And children are the greatest artists, you know, there is because they're free. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have this rule or, or, or you shouldn't use this and that. Mm -hmm. They just do it, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that so is yeah, part of the a freedom. world. Yes, yes, yes. Well, Shirley, um, what is your ultimate goal in being an artist? What? Yes, well, you know, I don't know how to, I don't know, it's, sometimes it's hard to separate being an artist and just being a person. And well, you can't because a lot of times, you know, I, um, I recall when I was hang, hanging with a lot of writers, you know, poets, you know, mm -hmm. musicians, you know. Um, your art form is like a marriage, you know, it, 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 sometimes it even comes before you're made, you know, your, your husband or wife, you know, the art is there. Mm -hmm. And so you have to find a way in terms of having your husband and your lover live together and get it all. Ah, <laughs> That's what it that. is. I one you love that. and one you're married to. I you know? love that. So yeah, to have them get them off. Yes, one of our friends, uh, Ron Prince, um, you know Ron, Ron's got your art, and he's leaving town, but he's he's on a plane, and he said he had to leave his baby behind, his guitar. I know. So yeah. that, he's like, that was painful. Yes. And so, yes. um, and that's the true artist, yeah. when you will not sacrifice your mm -hmm. art, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you know that it is your legacy. Yeah. And, we need that. We need to create history that leaves legacies. Because we're not going to be around forever. But how beautiful it is for your family to know and to hold you to a high esteem as an artist. Artists were once considered to be at such a high esteem that they sat at the feet of the king. And so that's how I admire the artists that I know. And, um, and I will continue to do that. So tonight we've had Shirley Hudson as, uh, as our artist. This is just the first segment on her because it's too much of her to know to just have it in just a 30 minute segment. So we would like to continue with Shirley. Um, know more about her cataloging, know more about her style, know more about her instructional capabilities as we may need to um, teach our young and, uh, how to do what she's doing. She's self-taught and that's another part of her life that uh, it will take a whole segment. So um, Shirley, thank you very much. You're um, is there anything in closing that you would like to say about your babies on stage? My babies? Yes. Are these your babies? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. You know, uh, creating art should be a part of everyone's life. You know, be it um, music, poetry, painting, uh, photography, 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 cooking. Yes. Doing your hair up. Yes. You know, it's 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 a wonderful thing. You know, it 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 gives you the ability to be a pleasant person. Okay, great. Blue Moon. In my artwork, I like to use a lot of uh, texture in it because I think that the surface reflects life. Life is not smooth, you know, and, and therefore I like to use anything, e even dirt or, or anything. This one here I call my black Jesus. Everyone who, who sees it recognizes who it is. It's my, one of my favorites. When I first started painting and 
1996, I was using a lot of wood. I like to uh, paint on wood because it's, it's something that's alive and it breathes. And when I first started painting, I would um, find my wood on the streets, in alleys, someone's yard, any place. It's because I, I feel like someone died for this, you know, and therefore use it, you know, and make it into a nice table or chair or a piece of artwork. Don't just leave it there to be rained and stepped on and whatever. This one here, this is um, one of a series of 10. And when I first started painting, I did these, and these were so, so reflective of what was going on with me, spiritually. So I have um, 10 of these, different, all of them reflect certain stages of my mind. Because every time someone creates a piece of art, they cannot duplicate that because they are never in the same mind space. It's impossible. This one here is, is one of, oh, the wood. Gotta fix that. This one here is, is one of many torsos I've done. Back in um, 1996, I did a, a show of 50 torso for this um, gallery called Ridge Arts. Laurie Beasley owned it. And um, all of them were like five by sevens, you know, really, really small. And these Haitian ladies go, oh, you're the artist. We love the way you do torsos. They're just so beautiful, you know? It was a really good experience for me, you know? And, and one lady came in, you know, her little purse, her little button up, you know, you know, shirt. Where is Shirley Hudson? Where is that Shirley Hudson? You know, I felt like, hi, you know, that over here, you know. She wanted the torsos off of the car, you know, plugger. She was, I want this and I want that. And she purchased it and turned right back around and left. Yeah. I like to do um, torsos because I feel like um, women are beautiful. We are, you know. And I would love to walk around in a main outfit. <laughs> this one here is, is absolutely tight. I like the, the fact that it's not all um, Texture. I call this African ribbon. This one here I call what's up. You know, this guy saying, hey, what's up? <laughs> it's one of my um, latest pieces. And I I really like doing abstract. Paintings, you know, because abstract paintings, I feel, take you to a uh, higher level. Because each time that you look at a piece of uh, abstract, you uh, always see something, you know, different, you know, something else that you hadn't noticed the first time. I love this one. <laughs> and, um, but I love Shirley. I mean, sometimes you just don't look at the art. You look at the artist, and then you see the reflection of the artist in the piece. And so when I met Shirley about 20 years ago, I was really clueless. And um, I did have a gallery over at the Garfield Park Conservatory Market. And Shirley was one of the first artists that exhibited in our gallery. And so I had no clue about what the true price of art was. 
So she did tell me that a very small piece would sell for $350, and I thought, this girl is crazy. But the, uh, uh, a customer walked in that Sunday and purchased that piece for $350, and then next week did the exact same thing. Another customer came in, and that validated, in my mind, people who understood art, people who valued it, and so that was my beginning of really appreciating the artist, not taking for granted what they valued their art at. And so now I'm working with other artists and I put them way up on the totem pole because they're the history makers. So surely we will continue again and we would like to thank you on behalf of Woman to Woman, produced by Ron Carter. Westside Cultural Arts Council, and Chicago, um, city at large. I so, love Chicago. Yes, this is the place, and uh, we will we'll continue. We've okay. got a movement called Chirac, uh, Chicago, Renewing the Culture, and you're part of that. You're part of us renewing our culture through showcasing your art and showcasing who we are as a people. So thank you again, and we look forward to presenting other artists through Woman to Woman, produced by Wanda Carter and Westside Cultural Arts Council, signing out. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank, Thank you, Shirley. Hi, this is Reverend R. Ken Turner, producer here at Can TV, to tell you about another great show that you can catch on Can TV. Omnibus Roundtable. That's right, Omnibus Roundtable. It's new and improved, and it's exciting because they handle the topics that you're interested in. In fact, if you have an idea for a program, if you have an idea for a show, call the number and talk with producer Wanda Carter. Look, make the time, make the time, and take the time to see Omnibus Roundtable right here on Can TV. Blessings and bliss. There are two types of people in this world. Those who are inspired and those who inspire. Those who constantly long for and those who acquire. No idea is original, yes there's truth in this, but the person who has the strength to implement the idea always is. Because there are those who have dreams and chase them, but those who sleep waiting to be awakened. Unaware that we can make a difference in our existence through hard work, resilience and persistence. Because a man that wishes to move mountains must realise that he must first start by shoveling pebbles from its base and be aware that no matter how long it takes, a man can move mountains. And most of you will think this is just a saying and a majority won't believe me. But when you get a couple minutes on your PC, Google Dasharath Manjihi because a man can move mountains. Success is a ladder and only few of us will find it. Even less of us will have the strength to climb it, afraid of the prospect of spending your whole life climbing. But just remember that no matter what route you take, it's always up to you to decide it. Don't let your success define you, let your success be defining. Have you seen that picture on Facebook of the guy that's mining? Why give up when you're this close to the diamond? Because people that change the world do not let the world change them. Because there are two types of people in this world. Those who are amazed and those who are amazing. So which one are you?